The Cyhawk series continues this weekend with Iowa State trying to go back to back in more, than, more ways than one, as you can see on your screen. The Cyclones breaking a six game losing streak last year with a low scoring game and Iowa hoping to experience an offensive resurgence this season. It looks like it's coming, maybe. In the week one win, Cade McNamara threw a touchdown pass on the first drive of the season. Iowa's first pass touchdown on a season opening drive since 1991. The first time that has happened for Iowa in Kirk Ferentz's 25 years. So with that, let's welcome David Eichold of Hawkeye Insider and Nick Osen of Cyclone Alert to preview this game. Nick, I'll start with you. Redshirt freshman quarterback Rocco Becht, efficient in his first start, 113 pass yards with two touchdowns, a 77% completion rate, no turnovers. Now, there was a little bit talk this offseason uh, out of necessity about a quarterback battle. What did you see from him that gives you confidence moving forward? Absolutely. You know, I think when you really look at things overall for Rocco in his first start, I think it was nearly perfect. Obviously, he showed a lot of confidence, poise within the pocket. Like you mentioned, 77% completion percentage. That's a really good day, especially in your first start, really no matter, you know, the talent of the defense. Obviously, one deep shot to Ben Bramer, as you can potentially see on some of the video. He really went to a lot of the tight ends, and that's a room that I think has a lot of talent, Grace, and you know has a lot of youth, depth, and is going to be a spot that really helps Rocco. I think he showed a little bit of his mobility, and moving forward, if he can just clean up some of the deep shots just a little bit more to Jalen Knoll and Jaden Higgins, I think he can be pretty successful in year one with the Cyclones. All right, we'll go to the other side now with you, David. Cade McNamara, supposed to be the promised one here. <laughs> first ever pass as a Hawkeye was a touchdown. His two touchdown passes coming in that first quarter. But he did leave the game later in garbage time, maybe still dealing with that leg injury, suffered during a scrimmage on August 12th. What does his status look like for week two? Yeah, Grace, this is something that Iowa and Cade McNamara is going to have to manage going forward. It's going to be sort of a day by day to week by week injury. But Cade McNamara is an incredibly tough player. And while he's still a little bit limited mobility wise, he can maneuver a pocket. And I think we saw that during Iowa's win, as you mentioned, the 36 yard completion touchdown to Seth Anderson. Deep shots to Luke Lachey, Nico Regani, Deontay Bynes. I mean, there are a number of players that we're at least put in a position to be successful with Cade McNamara at quarterback. It looked like Iowa was really excited to actually sort of air it out more than they had in past years. So while, you know, the playbook might be a little bit more limited, not as many bootlegs, maybe no quarterback sneaks, which Iowa has become known for, uh, Cade McNamara is going to be the best option going forward. But yes, this is going to be something that they're going to have to track uh, as the season goes along. All right, on the flip side of the ball now, these two secondaries known for carrying these teams, both pass defense rated top 11 last season. But for Iowa, starting corner Jamari Harris could be down another week. So, David, what should we expect from this team if he's forced out again? Yeah, this is going to be an interesting sort of chess match between the Iowa offense and, and Iowa's defense versus the Iowa State offense because there's so many sort of unknowns still with Iowa State. But look for redshirt freshman Deshaun Lee to get that star at cornerback on the opposite side of Cooper DeGene, who is a projected first round pick in the 2024 NFL draft. That's going to be something to look forward to. TJ Hall is going to be another guy that could potentially step in there. But I also think this puts a lot more pressure on Iowa safeties. I mean, five-star safety Xavier Wampa had an interception during Iowa's you know, first game. I think Quinn Schulte is going to be another guy that's going to have to step up. But if Iowa State goes into that sort of four or five wide receiver look, Look for Nick Jackson at linebacker to step out and guard a potential slot wide receiver. But Deshaun Lee performed incredibly well, I think, in his first career start. And he's going to be have to, another guy that's going to have to step up with Jamari Harris out for at least one more week. Yeah, and really for Iowa State, you know, this is going to be one of the best secondary matchups you're going to see in the entire country this weekend. I think Dave hit on a couple potential NFL players very likely NFL players for Iowa. And on the other side, Iowa State, TJ Tampa has gotten a lot of day two buzz, at least so far in next year's NFL draft at corner. Bo Freeler is somebody with some of his strength, ability in the run game, and just experience. He could be kind of that safety that plays in the box a little bit more at the next level. 
And you could go four or five players deep without generally even getting to the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week in Week 1, Jeremiah Cooper. He's kind of a hybrid player. He plays safety with Iowa State. A lot of speed. Two interceptions in Week 1, including a pick six. Was the highest rated player almost on the entire team by Pro Football Focus this week. And this secondary really goes at least six or seven guys deep. I think Miles Purchase on the opposite corner is maybe best in terms of press and a little bit of man down the field. And then Malik Verdon with his size, physicality, and finally being healthy. Like I mentioned, I think Iowa and Iowa State are both going to be showcasing four, five, six potential pros down the line this weekend in their respective secondaries. Okay, so we have some NFL prospects, maybe a little bit better known to watch out for. Nick, why don't you start us off here? Who are some under-the-radar players we could watch? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that this player actually does have the chance to be a pro down the line. But for much of the kind of national media and fans tuning in, he will still be under the radar, and that's true freshman tailback Abu Sama. Now, many people around Iowa know him not just because of being at Iowa State, but one of the most decorated football players in high school history within the state of Iowa. He put up six touchdowns, nearly 400 rushing yards in the state title game, was recruited as a defensive back for a while, but is now fully playing running back. And though he's still very young in a potentially deep room, He's got some of that speed, explosiveness, vision, versatility. I can tell you that while Iowa State has had a lot of really, really good running backs as of late, including starting NFL running backs, guys like Brees Hall, David Montgomery, who's now with the Lions, there's a lot of excitement around this young player. I think that he showed some of his potential in week one with a really pretty nearly 30-yard rush when he used a couple stiff arms using his elusiveness, some of that downfield speed, like I mentioned. Abu Sama, a player to watch for Iowa State. Yeah, I'm going to go a little bit more off the radar. Huge transfer addition for Iowa, and that's going to be former Ohio State wide receiver Caleb Brown. Caleb Brown only played about 23 snaps in Iowa's season opener. Did not get a touch, but this is a guy that I think is arguably Iowa's best wide receiver prospect that they've ever gotten in the room. Played a lot of running back in high school, but I think he could be Iowa's most versatile offensive player by the end of the year. It's a guy who I think's route running is crisp. He's got that power. He's a great athlete, solid hands. The big deal for Iowa is, will they cater the playbook to get Caleb Brown involved? Because as I mentioned, he has some of the quickest feet I've seen an Iowa wide receiver have. And looking back at some of the film in Iowa season opener, he was open down the sidelines a couple of times, but whether it be Cade McNamara didn't have enough time to be able to go through his progressions, whether the play was or was not for him, Caleb Brown's going to be a guy that if he goes out there in Iowa State, has four to five catches, and even scores, it's not going to surprise me. But there's going to be a lot of attention paid to Luke Lachey and Eric All at tight end, and rightfully so, and Caleb Johnson at running back. I really do think this could be the week for Caleb Brown to really start to emerge as one of Iowa's better receiving options. All right, David Eichel and Nick Oson, enjoy the game this weekend, and thanks so much for joining us. And for the best coverage on Iowa and Iowa State football, keep it locked in to HawkeyeInsider.com and CycloneAlert.com.